TEJ. This is a video on how to use put push button with Arduino. We'll be using Tinkercad to simulate it. We'll be using something called the pull up configuration. So when we go to Tinkercad, create a new project, and let's call this uh, Arduino push button with pull up configuration or just config. And let's do a test here, just so that we know what we're working with, with our button. So we're going to get our push button. And I want to see if we can use these bottom two leads of the push button. So let's test it with our coin battery. We're going to have the positive connected to our positive bus. And our negative connected to the negative bus. And then what we'll do is... Um, we're going to have an LED. Let's see if an LED is able to be powered. So we're going to have our resistor going from positive. So current comes through the resistor. It gets limited by the switch unless it's pushed down. So if it's not pushed down, it can't get go through. But if it is pushed down, it will allow the current to go through this LED and then back to ground. So when we try it, our LED is lighting up. So that proves to us that these bottom two legs can be used as a push button. So I'm going to erase the battery now and get in our Arduino. We do need our LED and uh, resistor. I'll erase them for now. But let's get our Arduino Uno. And we're going to power the bottom negative and positive buses with uh, ground and also plus three volts. So here's my ground. And here's my plus 3.3 .3 volts. And you can make it, spend more time to make it square. Okay, so here's what we want to do. We want to power our button. It's going to be going into an input. So pin 7 is going to be used for input. So in the, uh, our last video with the LEDs, we were using pins for output, but we're going to be using pins for input. That means that pin 7 is going to be either receiving an electrical signal or not an electrical signal. So we're going to have pin 7 going to uh, the other leg of our uh, button. And now we'll have our, our resistor. So our resistor, resistor is going to be coming from uh, the positive bus, so it's powered and we're going to have another uh, leg here or another wire going to ground. So let's see what that means. And I apologize, I do have it uh, mixed up a bit. So we're just going to reverse these two wires. We're going to have this going to ground and we're going to have this one going into our same uh, bus that has the resistor from plus 3.3 uh, .3 volts. So let's look what happens. If the button's not pressed, uh, current's coming out of 3.3 .3 volts. It's going into the resistor and it is going, after that, it's going into, seven, into port 7. So port 7, the input port is uh, pin, is, is going to be reading uh, a high voltage. But if we have it pressed, then what happens is um, the current that goes through the resistor gets drained to ground. Okay, So that means that pin 7 is going to show a high value if the button is not pressed, and it's going to show a low value if the button is pressed. So that's the opposite of what you would expect. So we're actually getting low voltage in pin 7 when it's pressed. When it's not pressed, it's high voltage. And that's because of the way it's connected here. That's called the pull-up configuration. It's the most stable configuration to work with Arduino. If we don't use this and we connect it up the way we think it should be connected, uh, just with like a push button, like I'm going to show you here, if we just have a push button and we just have one going from 3.3 .3 volts directly into pin 7, you're going to get unexpected results. Okay, so sometimes it might work, sometimes it, a lot of times it won't work. Uh, go ahead and try it, but just know why it doesn't work if, if that does happen. 
So this is the correct pull-up configuration. Now what we have to do is program it to say either high or low, depending on what's pressed. So we'll see that next. So let's set up uh, pin number seven for input. Click on code. Yeah, no, it's always gonna go to blocks. Let's go to text. We'll be using text. And um, pin mode, we're gonna say seven, and we're gonna say input. Connection lost. We've been having issues with the internet all day. Uh, looks okay now though. So the command we'll be using is digital read. And we're gonna have an if statement. For those of you that have done ICS, you've seen if statements. You've also seen them in TEJ3M if you're in TEJ4M. Otherwise, if you haven't, an if statement just makes a decision based on a condition. So the condition goes in the brackets. And in this case, there's a command called digital read. And digital read takes in a pin. It's gonna read in pin number seven and see if it is uh, equal to zero. So when we uh, compare a value in programming, we have to use two equal signs. So we wanna see if there's no flow going through. Because remember the way this works, 3.3 .3 volts is coming through. It's going through the LED. This might be a bit confusing because these are, two in, these are in line. Don't forget though, this is the positive bus. What I'm gonna do to make it a bit clearer is I'm just gonna drag this over like that, just to make it a bit clearer so you don't think that you know it's connected to this over here. It is connected to the resistor and when it goes through the resistor, it's going to be going to seven when it's not pressed. So if it's zero, that's when it's being pressed because then it's being drained to ground. So if it's equal to zero, I'm gonna put curly braces around here and this is the style that they use. So if that's the case, we wanna tell everybody that um, well, the, the button's being pressed. And so what we wanna do is turn on a light bulb, uh, an LED. So click on code again and we'll put in our LED just to hide it. We'll put an LED in there and we'll connect it up to pin six, let's say or pin eight, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna get in the LED, the resistor, it's gonna go over this channel, and here is where the LED is gonna be connected to uh, six. So, so yeah, I really don't like having the wires on top of each other, so I might change this orientation here. What if we did this? Let's do this, so we'll put the LED at the bottom here. It's gonna go to ground and the positive goes into pin. Let's use pin eight. Let's use pin eight. That way there's the wires are a lot neater. I'm gonna make this red. Make this. Hmm. How do we so this is 3.3 .3 volts. This is red. This is this is our ground, so that's black. This is the cathode of the LED, it's black. This is going to ground, so it's also black. And this wire, I'm gonna leave it green because it's going to seven, it's providing input for the circuit. It's either gonna be one or zero, high or low. So remember, one is high voltage, and in this case we got 3.3 .3 volts. The resistor is limiting the current a bit, and then uh, low, a low voltage would be close to zero and that's how it's encoded. So now we're gonna go back to our code and we're gonna say, well, if, well, we have to set our pin. So we have to set pin mode for eight to be uh, output, right? Because that's our LED. And then we're gonna say, uh, turn the LED on. So that's our digital write command, digital write pin eight, and we'll say hi. Else, so here's the else. Uh, the else is a catch-all. If you haven't programmed uh, in the past, or you forget, if digital seven dig digital read seven is zero, it'll do this. In all their cases, it'll do the else. So in that case, we want digital write of eight. Whoops, and it's case sensitive. So digital write is all lowercase except for the W. And we're going to say low there. 
So now when we start our simulation, click on Start Simulation. Uh, and when I press the button, it's the LED's on, and as soon as I release it, it goes off. So that's how you use the pull-up configuration with an LED. That's the end of this video.